throughout this summer, we've seen so many bad air quality days thanks to forest fire smoke from across the country. Here at York University, researchers from around the world are gathering to use state-of-the-art technology in an effort to better understand how poor air quality is impacting our health and our community. Here at the rooftop of the Petrie Science Building, second-year student Yushar Iranpur is one of about 40 scientists embarking on an intense six-week research project. I thought that like it could be useful for not just you know myself as a scientist, but also for society in general. For Iranpur, it's a personal passion with a national interest. I used to come here for this roof for three years now, and my initial glance upon this today is that it has changed significantly compared to other years. When I look at the haze, it just gives me a glance of uh, you know, shockingly about what the future could be, could hold. Those intense forest fires we've seen have been yet another wake up call for him and others. We've been known for having one of the best air qualities in the world. And so for us to see some event like this goes to show the impact of, you know, where the world is heading to and, and, and what we have to do to sort of uh, you know, mitigate and, uh, and reduce that. So for the coming weeks, he'll be gathering weather information. This is just one type of data though. Look around and millions of dollars of highly specialized equipment is crammed together, running 24-7, gathering information in real time. This is Excalibur, a device built here and named after the allergens it can detect. There are tools to gather and analyze air particles. As you can see here, there was a spike in dust at around 6 a.m. There are also rain gauges, aerosol collection and separation tools, and carbon capture filters to spit out data. Things like chlorine and so-called forever chemicals can be tracked too. What we're doing is starting to look at the data and think about it, and over the next few months to a couple years, we'll really be able to understand how the measurements we're making can help to inform policy to improve air quality for Toronto. Associate Chemistry Professor Cora Young is working with students and researchers on the project. There are emissions of, of different chemicals that lead to this soup that lead to poor air quality. There's no safe level of, of air quality. Um, air quality is known to be hazardous to, to human health at any level and our goal here is to figure out how we can get our air in the city of Toronto as pristine as possible. Teams in Chicago, New York City and Dayton, Ohio are doing similar work. Environment and Climate Change Canada, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and NASA are partners too. In fact, there's a new NASA air quality satellite watching over North America now. It'll help this project as well. This is a unique um, experiment in Canada and um, you know it's pretty unusual around the world to be able to collect this much equipment and expertise to understand air quality. Meanwhile, the group hopes to solidify their findings within the next year. I'm thinking that we're going to have a pretty solid evidence for better understanding air quality in the future. We'll have more on the research being done here at citynews.ca. At York University, Nick Westall, City News.